a distribution that is so easy to use, even a five-year-old can get around fine with the ability to play games. That is the dream. In today's video, let's see if I can make it happen using the Endless OS. Hello everyone, this is another episode of Distro Hopping where I can either get a happy ending That's what she said! or I just get frustrated. My name is Hugo. I make videos for everyone who wants to enjoy the fun and freedom on Linux. If you're new to Linux or have been enjoying my content, please slightly touch the like button and subscribe to my channel. Your help is my motivation. Thank you. Now sit tight and enjoy. Let's start with the downloading first. There are several things to mention here. First, there is a USB creation tool for Windows users. It seems to be able to create a USB installer directly from Windows, just like the Windows Media Creation tool. This is super helpful and seems like a very good option for people who are on Windows. I didn't have any Windows installation when I was recording this video, so I didn't try this. But please let me know how it works in the comment down below. I went ahead to get the ISO file, but beware. First, everything looks quite large compared to other distributions. The basic system alone is 3GB, and the English full version is whopping 16GB. It makes some sense to me after reading the website. It says it doesn't need to connect to the internet after the installation, but it seems that they are trying to package as much as possible in the installer itself to minimize the internet connection during the installation. I think it would be more accurate to say that once downloaded, no internet is required. I was commenting on the size of Gorilla Linux Gaming Edition being huge last year, and it seems we have a new king now. So make sure you have a big enough USB drive if you want to try out the full version. I chose the basic version because they claim that all the apps from the full version can be installed later if I have the internet access. And I'm too stupid to use those educational apps anyways. All I cared about was gaming. The other thing is that even though their FAQ page says it supports direct download, the only option I see is to use Torrent on their official download page. I'm not sure if I missed anything here. I was able to find the direct download link in their tutorial page sometimes later. It seems the creators really want people to use torrenting as the default way to get the ISO files. The surprising factor for me when it comes to torrenting is that I understand it is hard to provide multiple download mirrors for files this large, but I don't know how many users in the educational institution actually have the access to torrent. Isn't it true that most of the American schools ban torrenting protocol right out of the gate? And isn't it counterproductive to provide an educational oriented system through torrenting? But since I'm only a gamer on Linux, I will let this question slide. Now let's do the installation. It literally took two clicks from beginning to end. I didn't have to choose anything other than which version to install and which disk to install on. And the whole process took me about 5 minutes to finish. I don't remember installing anything this simple. My mind was blown away. Let's take a look at the desktop itself. I got a deja vu feeling after the very first boot up because of the wallpaper. If my memory serves me right, it is also being used in elementary OS. Now I'm wondering which distribution used it first, and realize that both distributions initial is EOS, which I found is quite amusing. But again, it is not important. At least it looks quite slick to me. The other thing is that if you're familiar with the application manual from any other Linux distribution or Windows, the bottom left button is not the application manual. It is for showing the desk or showing all the open applications. I found myself clicking on it when trying to launch applications a lot, which is quite confusing. And FYI, all the applications are on the desktop. Now, let me tell the biggest frustration I got with this distribution, gaming. Usually at this stage, I will always need to worry about NVIDIA, but after some research, it seems the driver is installed automatically. Cool, let me try some gaming then. It's been a year and a month of me making videos on YouTube now, and I'm still showing you guys the same games I was playing. Sadly, I used up all my spare time making videos. So not only did I stop gaming, 
I had to relearn all the button layouts every time I made a gaming related video on Linux. So please don't consider me as a die-hard gamer. I can only tell you what has been working for me as a very casual Linux gamer. And I hope it is still relevant to people out there. And feel free to let others know how you are able to make your games work by leaving the comment down below. Anyways, the most difficult games I had to set up on Linux is the Assassin's Creed Origin because it needs Uplay from Ubisoft. And Steam does not work without Uplay being installed through Proton Tricks. So I decided to see if they work properly here. But before we dive into that, I want to mention that Endless OS is an immutable system, meaning you cannot alter anything on the system level. The advantage is that you will not break by some user error, which is why it is friendly for kids and almost everyone. The disadvantage is that you cannot install applications on the system partition. However, remember the flat pack I mentioned in this video. This is one of the best places for that tool to shine because it will manage everything independent of the system. And the best part is, like NVIDIA, it is built in to be used as the default way of installing applications. No additional effort is needed. The applications on App Store are configured to be downloaded from FlatHub by default. Back to my gaming journey. While I was installing the game, issues started to pile up. First, the Proton Tricks cannot be installed by using App Store. It kept complaining about not being able to reach the remote server. But when I use Flatpak command in terminal, everything seems fine. Okay, that's a minor issue. Let's move on. The blocker came after I installed the game in Steam and started trying to use Proton Tricks to install Uplay. Proton Tricks just wouldn't start. It says the Flatpak version is too old and it refused to run with the old version sandbox. That is a proper dead end. As I mentioned, because Flatpak comes built in with the system and the system is immutable, there is no way to update Flatpak other than waiting for the analyst team to bump up the version with a new release. Okay, I didn't get discouraged right away because I remember Lutris was working properly with all the games on Uplay and it's also available on FlatHub. And that is what got me finally ditching the idea of playing games. Lutris is straight up not installing. First, I thought it was the same issue like Proton Tricks because in the App Store, it gave the same 53 error message. But no, I was able to see the actual error message when using the terminal, which says GPG verification is disabled. I wonder if it is because this is a new feature added by a later Flatpak version. But anyways, no luck playing anything with Uplay. So here's a picture of Squirrel to make up the time you spent watching on my video. A distribution that even a kid can use, along with a powerful Flatpak, seems like a dream combination when I started making this video. There's no denying that it has so much potential because this is the first time I don't have to set up anything regarding NVIDIA and Flatpak. But these conveniences got me nowhere near the game I want to play. And I'm not even a serious gamer. I understand the distribution is not for adult, but I feel it is almost there with just a little bit more development. I really want to see where it is going because I have such a high hope to recommend it to all the new Linux users who want to play games. But on this terrible disappointment, I'll have to end this video. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.